Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for clicking on my picture if this is your first time to my channel. I'm Emily Summer. I am a wedding planner and photographer located in Montana and I make videos giving tips and advice for planning your wedding. So let's jump right into today's topic and today we're going to talk about how to make your wedding guests happy aka the seven things your guests actually do care about at your wedding. don't care about at your wedding and if you haven't checked that out I will link it right here so you can watch that video as well if you're looking for things that you can cross off your list to either save you money or save you time planning or whatever that may be and today we're going to talk about the things that your guests actually do care about so number one is the directional logistics of your wedding so that's the location the date and the time your guests do care about where you're going to be getting married, whether that's a destination wedding for you or a destination wedding for your guests and you live somewhere where the majority of your guests do not. Make sure you're choosing a location that it's actually somewhere that your guests would want to travel to if you're wanting to have a fairly large guest count and a lot of people come to travel to be at your wedding. Um, keep in mind, whether this is a destination wedding or not, that if a lot of people are traveling, even if it's just an hour or two drive, that the venue that you're getting that you're having your wedding at is close to at least other accommodations. So maybe it's close to the nearest town, it's not too far of a drive for people that are going to be having to travel in um, that morning or having to drive back at the end of the evening after some cocktails. Or easily accessible via Uber, Lyft, um, a shuttle, something like that. Basically, um, keep in mind that if a lot of people are going to be traveling for your wedding, you want to make sure that there are com there are accommodations nearby for them to to make that as easy as possible. The date is another thing to consider if you are wanting to maximize the amount of people that are going to attend your wedding. Um, keep in mind times around holidays and times around. The middle of summer are a lot of times that people are taking a lot of time off already for family vacations or for other weddings, holiday vacations, that sort of thing. So choose a date that's not going to fall around a major holiday if you want to make sure that a lot of people are going to be able to attend your wedding and be happy about it. The time is another thing to consider, um, depending on the time of the year and the location that you're getting married at, what part of the region of the world you're in. Um, the time of day that you're getting married does matter, and this is particular and particularly important for those that are living in a place like Montana, where during the peak of summer, it doesn't get dark until probably... 10 10 30 at night and so when you're having an all outdoor wedding a lot of people try and push that ceremony time as late as possible so that they're able to have some sort of dancing while it is actually dark outside more than like 15 20 minutes of your wedding so in that case that typically means that the the majority of the dancing and the the kind of party aspect of your wedding isn't going to happen until about 9 9 30 at night and at that point many guests have started to leave or are anxiously like wanting to leave the wedding and so if you're starting later in the evening and you have a lot of guests that either have children or elderly guests that aren't really big night owls then you want to keep that in mind if you have a large majority of those or a large number of those guests at your wedding that they may not want to have to stay and hang out that late in order to see your first dance and see your father da daughter dance and all that sort of thing. So just keep the timing in mind when you're selecting your date and time and all of that before you send out all of your invitations and just keep your guest um, count and, and who you have in your guests list in mind when making that decision as well. Number two is parking, and this is something a lot of people don't think about until they're kind of in the thick of planning. Uh, you want to have a location that has accessible parking, and this means, you know, not having to park somewhere and walk a mile to get to your actual wedding venue or walk down a steep hill or through gravel or what it may be, especially um, for those ladies that are wearing heels and maybe they're not used to wearing heels, and if you're going to be in heels all night, those things hurt after sometimes even 10-15 minutes. So um, keep in mind what the parking situation is 
is like and remember to be looking for that as you are looking at venues and understand what the parking situations will be so that you can let your guests know and if it is something that will be a bit of a jaunt from either parking to your ceremony or maybe there's a long walk from your ceremony site to your reception site having some sort of transportation um, whether that's like a golf cart or some sort of sort of shuttle service situation to help uh, transport any guests that may need it to get from point A to point B. Another thing on the topic of parking is guests want it to be cheap or free. If guests show up to your wedding and realize they have to pay like a $20 parking fee or uh, pay for a valet or something like that, that's kind of a bummer, especially if they're not anticipating that. So keep that in mind when either looking for venues or um, see if you can pay to have a selection of vehicles in a, a certain location ahead of time so that that doesn't fall on, the responsibility doesn't fall on your guests on the day of the wedding. Number three is entertainment. Um, this is probably a given, but your guests obviously want to be entertained at your wedding or be enjoying themselves in some way. And so um, a great DJ is a perfect way to start with this. I've said it before, a DJ can really make or break your wedding and the whole vibe of your wedding. And having a great DJ is something that is so valuable at your wedding, both to help keep the day flowing and also to be able to read the room, read the crowd, understand how people are feeling, if people are getting antsy or like looking around and waiting for the next thing to happen or wondering if they can duck out early because things are kind of boring or slow. Um, a good DJ will be able to help kind of sense that and read the room and get people out onto the dance floor if it's a little bit sad um, and really get people pumped up and excited. Uh, entertainment can also include having lawn games, especially if you have a cocktail hour where you're finishing up some photos or if you have a buffet and you have a large crowd and people are kind of waiting to, for their turn to go through the line to have something to kind of keep them occupied so there isn't this big chunk of time where people are just sitting and waiting for the next thing to happen. So this ties right into number four, which is the overall timeliness of your wedding. So similarly to, as I mentioned before, having um, as, as little extra time and awkward kind of downtime and space where your guests are just waiting for the next thing to happen is key. You wanna make sure that you're planning a timeline where you, you wanna have enough buffer time in between activities so that if you're running late, your whole evening doesn't get totally behind, but not long enough so that your guests are you know, impatient um, and, and feeling like they want to leave before the next event occurs, but there's a lot of waiting around and um, boredom, essentially. A photo booth is another great form of entertainment to have at your wedding, especially if you have guests that aren't really big on dancing, but still want to like stay and hang out and have something to do. Number five is food and alcohol, which I'm sure comes as no surprise. Your guests will care about what food is served at your wedding and also what the bar alcohol situation will be. If you have an earlier ceremony and you have a cocktail hour and kind of a big chunk of time in between when your guests will arrive, if it's like mid-afternoon, late afternoon to get to your ceremony and then you're not having dinner until 6 or 7 o'clock at night, um, please have appetizers or have something available for your guests because a lot of times they won't eat lunch because of either the timing of the wedding and they have to travel or they're getting ready or maybe they're just saving their appetite for whatever great meal you're gonna have at your wedding. So that's a long time for people to go, especially if you're wanting them to be um, partying and dancing on the dance floor and all that. So it's a really good idea to have some sort of appetizer or something that your guests can snack on prior to dinner time to keep them full and happy. Now, when it comes to alcohol, this is obviously different for every couple and in every group of guests is going to be different in the sense of what they're looking for, what they enjoy from um, a bar at a wedding, and that also comes down to you as a couple for what you choose to have. It is not expected to have a fully open bar at your wedding. Um, I will say that a cash bar at a wedding is a bit of a bummer for guests and a lot of times guests won't come prepared for that. They won't have cash on them. Um, they might have a little bit to be able to tip the bar, but I would say that it's not that common of a practice to have a cash bar for when, and when I say cash bar, if you don't know what that means, um, that basically means that each guest would pay for his or her own drink as they get it. So nothing is on the house. You're not supplying any sort of alcohol. If they want to drink, they have to pay for it. I know that weddings can be expensive. I know that the costs add up, but when you're inviting all these people to come and celebrate you and your partner, and whether that's traveling across the country, across state lines, or even just a couple hour drive, it's just a nice gesture to be able to provide 
something for them in exchange for them being there, probably giving you a gift and all that. If you don't have the funds for a completely fully open bar, that's totally fine. Like I said, it's not expected and you don't have to have, you know, top shelf liquor in order to make your guests happy. Just having a couple options, even if it's just beer and wine, I always recommend to my clients to do beer, wine, and then if you want to have a liquor option, just do a signature cocktail. That way it's there, um, it's an option for your guests if they don't want beer or wine, but then you don't have to fully have, you don't have to have a fully stocked bar with multiple different kinds of liquors, the multiple different kinds of mixers that go with that liquor, and everything is just there, you've got the options, you've got your bases covered, and it's going to cost you a lot less than having an open bar or a fully stocked bar. On this note, also have some decent non-alcoholic options because obviously there will be guests that do not wish to drink alcohol and maybe you're having a dry wedding, that's totally fine, um, but make sure you do have at least one or two good non-alcoholic options that aren't just water. So maybe this is like in Montana huckleberry lemonade or some sort of flavored iced tea or something like that just to kind of um, give your guests a good option that isn't necessarily alcoholic as well. Number six is bathrooms and this is something that a lot of people again don't really think about and a lot of venues especially if you're in a location like Montana that are more uh, rustic barn outdoor style weddings uh, you got outhouses and while they serve their purpose I suppose when you have guests getting dressed up um, in dresses and nice clothes going to a fancier event the last thing they want to do is to have to go into a smell smelly porta potty line. Um, there are options here. If it's in your budget, there are uh, restroom trailers you can rent, and I imagine this is the case throughout the country. Wherever you are, there are probably some sort of rental service that does have the restroom trailers that you can rent, and what they are is literally a trailer that has multiple restrooms on it. There's different sizes, so you can get um, like three restrooms, or some of them are double-sided, so you have three on one side, three on the other, and you walk in and it's just like a nice much nicer feeling restroom and a little bit more room too so this is especially nice for you brides if you need a space to pick up your dress and have to maneuver and use the restroom while in your fancy wedding dress having a little bit more space to do so is super nice so look into restroom options wherever you are getting married and also keep in mind the proximity of your restrooms to your event if you do have porta potties i'm sure you're going to want to hide them but you also don't want to have them like way off in the distance to where guests have to walk super far to go get to them because that's no fun either. And last but not least, your guests just overall want to feel involved and they want to feel connected to you as a couple. So make sure you're building in time in your timeline or setting aside time uh, sometime throughout the weekend so that you can really uh, connect with every individual that's going to be attending your wedding. The day goes by so fast and I've I've heard from so many people in the past that, you know, the, the wedding went by so quickly, they were so busy taking photos or doing this or that or the dances and everything that they didn't get a chance to really even talk to some people at the wedding and they're looking through the photos two months later and they're like, oh my gosh, Jim and Sue, I didn't even get to see the entire time I was at my wedding. And, and that's the last thing you really want to be thinking about in the days leading after your wedding. And so just building that time in, whether that's during dinner and you are making the time to go around and say hello to each guest at their table while everybody else is eating or going through the buffet line or if you're doing a destination wedding and people are coming in early being able to have a either a larger rehearsal dinner or some sort of meet and greet or something prior to the wedding day is a great option as well just building in some sort of time so that you are thanking your guests for being there and being able to have some sort of FaceTime with everyone that will be involved in your wedding day. That's something that really does mean a lot to your guests. Well, there you have it. There are seven things that your guests actually do care about at your wedding, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more wedding videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you